Do house plants clean the air in your home? Let's have a close look at this issue. I know you've seen the articles. They're all over the place. They'll give you a list of plants that clean the air in your home. Here's some titles of the better known articles. HGTV says the 20 best plants for cleaning indoor air. They must know what they're talking about. Good Homekeeping says 12 air purifying plants that will give your home a breath of fresh air. Who wouldn't want that? I'm not at all surprised that you believe house plants clean the air in your home, but I'm here to tell you they don't work. I looked into this several years ago and I've written extensively on my blog, gardenmyths.com. The bottom line is that house plants do not purify the air in your home. Now, a lot of the articles will mention a NASA study done in 89, and they claim that this study proves that house plants clean the air. Well, it turns out that that NASA study is easily available online. You can go and look at it yourself, and it's actually a study that's pretty easy to read. So what are the conclusions that this study reached? Well, they never tested house plants in a home. They never made any kind of claim that house plants cleaned the air in your home. They never provided a list of plants that will clean the air in your home. So why do all these articles say these things? Well, it's pretty clear that most of these writers have just copied from other writers. They never went and looked at the study. The other thing I find quite amazing is that many of these writers come up with the best list of plants, but they're all different. It's not as if a hundred writers out there use the same list of plants. I'm pretty convinced they go to their picture file, pick out pictures that they have for houseplants, and they write about those. So what did the NASA study actually do? Well, they did look at the plant's ability to remove chemicals from air. They were looking at VOCs, which are volatile organic chemicals, things like formaldehyde, benzene, and toluene. And these are dangerous chemicals. They're toxic, and some of them cause cancer. So there is a concern with these chemicals. But what NASA did was they took the plant and put it in a very small container, a box about this size, and then they injected the chemical and watched to see what happens over time. Now, the first thing that pops out to you right away is that this container is mostly plants. There's very little air in here. Whereas in a home, you've got a big room and a small plant in the corner. Completely different situation. The second thing that's important to understand is that in this experiment, they injected the chemical once and then monitored it over time and seen that it slowly decreased. That's not what happens in our homes. In our homes, these chemicals are constantly being produced. The carpet, the chair I'm sitting in, the paint on the wall behind me, the hardwood floor, your cupboards, most of your furniture, all of that gives off VOCs. The material in your home is constantly adding these chemicals to the air. It's not a one-time injection like in the NASA study. And that's critical for understanding the results. In fact, you might be surprised that the plastic pot you keep your plants in is actually creating VOC chemicals. It's polluting the air in your home. Now, what did NASA find? Well, it found some plants were able to remove some of the chemicals. Then they did a very interesting experiment. They took a plant, put it in this chamber, injected a chemical, watched it slowly going down. Then they took the plant out, cut the plant off, and only put the pot back in the chamber, and they injected the chemical again. Well, guess what happened? The chemical decreased almost at the same rate as when the plant was there. This was followed by other studies which show that the bacteria that are living in the soil are much more efficient at removing these chemicals than the plants are. Now, the plants do remove some of these chemicals, but not a lot of them. The bacteria are much better at it, but there aren't enough bacteria in a small potted plant to do anything in a home. Your home has far too much air compared to that little pot. I've been following this story for a number of years, and I look at all the research that's done. To date, there is not one study 
that looks at plants purifying the air in your home. So we really can't make any kind of conclusion. However, there are some studies that look at plants in an office setting, which is fairly similar to a home. And what they found was there's no effect on the air. The chemicals in the air in an office do not decrease by adding plants to the office. So that makes it pretty clear that plants in a home are also not going to work. Now, if you add enough plants, if you basically create a greenhouse, so you've got a hundred large plants in your living room, they will affect the air and they will clean it a bit. But remember, you have five or seven or ten rooms in the home. You have to fill all of them with a hundred plants and nobody does that. The claim that plants clean the air in your home is a complete myth. It just won't die. Now, you might know that plants produce oxygen when they photosynthesize. Right, they absorb the CO2 and they give off oxygen. At least during the day they do that. Well, some people claim that that extra oxygen is great for us. It makes us feel better. Well, it turns out that the amount of oxygen plants produce is so small, it makes no difference to the air in a home. The other thing you have to remember is that plants also produce CO2. And they produce CO2 all day and all night. Any organism that's living uses up carbon sources, things like sugars, and they convert those into energy. And in that process, they produce CO2, and they do that constantly, all the time. So although it's true that during photosynthesis, plants produce oxygen, the rest of the time, they're producing CO2. The level of neither of those changes enough in a home to make any difference. You don't have to worry about having plants in your bedroom at night they won't suffocate you. And having plants in your living room is not going to make you feel better. These are all common myths. If you want to learn more garden myths, have a look at my two books, Garden Myths Book 1 and Book 2. Each one has 120 myths in it. They're both completely different. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll love these books. They're available on Amazon. Click on the link. I'll take you to more information. Have fun in the garden.